Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about this a little bit. So this is a CNC alignment collar I whipped up in OpenSCAD uh, for my 3040 CNC, or basically it'll fit any 800-watt uh, um, you know, CNC or 65-millimeter diameter CNC machine out there. I have the files out on Thingiverse as well as a customizer, so you can... Uh, you know, change it for all the way from I think 45 to something like 75 millimeter diameter spindles. And if there's a need to go above that, let me know. Because um, a couple challenges in the code dealing with uh, these appendages here and trying to keep it parametric, but that's a little bit off track. Uh, I will have a link. I have done a video on this over on the Open SCAD channel. I'll have a link to that below if you want to go over and take a look. And also the code for this is on my Open SCAD site too, as well as a customizer on Thingiverse. So feel free to go out there and borrow that if you want. But what I want to do is talk about this a little bit more. Uh, so what I did is I've set this up. Um, so I have a z-axis measurement and I have an xy axis measurement because this just flips over and I can measure xy, x or y with this particular strut. And notice I've added extra reinforcing here so this is pretty rigid. You know again this is not perfect. I wouldn't make um, SpaceX parts with it but you know for a home hobbyist you know it's done very well. So the piece is, and I'll do a separate video on this, is using this to really fine-tune garble. Because again, uh, maybe backing up a little bit, is winter approaches here in Michigan. One of the things that I, I'm going to do is upgrade to garble 1.1 uh, .1 from 9.2. And by the way, for those new to the channel, I do call it garble, not gerbil. I hate calling it gerbil, so it's just my thing. So um, please forgive me. So just... Don't, don't write down below and say it's some little rodent animal. But anyways, uh, back on topic. So one of the things that I want to do is with these is really uh, measure number one movement, number two repeatability of the uh, spindle itself. And this way I can really fine tune the garble numbers in and, and that's what I want to do with this. So tell you what, let's go over to the CNC real quick and just take a look at it on the machine. Now I'm going to do a separate video on how to use this uh, to come up with your garble numbers. That's going to be a separate video. I just want to show how this fits, how it works, and that kind of stuff so you guys get an idea. And if you want to print it out, you know, hey, uh, go ahead. If you do print it out, please post a make on Thingiverse. Um, you know, uh, I, I give this away for free, this design away for free. The only thing I ask is if you do do a make, you know, please post it out there. It just helps popularize the designs and things like that and, you know, lets me see that you guys are interested. So let's head over to the machine. Okay, so here we have it mounted on the machine. Uh, in short, uh, this thumb screw basically cinches this down over top of the spindle. I've got the meters on here and here. Now, one of the things on this meter, obviously, uh, this sticks out further than the gantry over here. So I've got this clamp on here. What I'm going to do is I'm also going to mix up... Um, uh, a piece that mounts on the bed to push against because obviously in the Y it has nothing to push against either. So that's going to be a coming project uh, where I'll, ha I'll have a stanchion that I can push off here that I'll either mount here, you know, and then I can switch it over to here for the uh, Y. But again, I want to show you that I just have the clamp there. Uh, most of what I do though is actually uh, making sure I have a precision Z because you know, I usually have quite a bit of give in the XY plane, but the Z, because you're cutting thinner materials, you know, you really want to have this perfect, especially to get good tabs and things like that. So what I do is I run this down till I'm about, uh, you know, roughly halfway down. So notice that this is, this is up a little bit, because then what I do is I zero out um, my uh, meter. And so... Now, what I'm going to do is issue a command uh, to run this down. Now, you want to make sure, I still have the bid in here, but I have plenty of clearance here, so you want to kind of be safe with that to make sure you have enough clearance. And this is one of the reasons I did this downward stanchion that this gauge mounts to, uh, is to clear the bit and the spindle head, which you really can't see because it's behind the, uh, uh, the uh, mount. So, so watch as I run this down. I'm going to issue a G0 command. So I have issued a G05 command, so you can kind of see it's really, really close to 5. 
Now, what I'm going to do is, what well, this was a G0Z negative 5, so I went down 5 millimeters. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up 5 millimeters. Okay, so I issued uh, basically back to my home position, or uh, Z equals 0. And you notice that I'm just a little bit of a tad off. So this is actually tuned in pretty close. Uh, so one of the things that I also want to do is repeatability. So if I do this um, several times, do I get do I get the same repeatability? Because one of the pieces I'm going to do while I have the clockwise meter over here, I am going to connect this to the PC. And I'm going to have it do, you know, maybe like a hundred movements. I'm going to write a G code routine to do like a hundred up down movements and, and measure them. And then I can statistically compare them. You could get really fancy and, and kind of try to find out the periodic error in the spindle. I might do that in a future video. This, this guy is pretty darn close for hobbyist work. So I'm, I don't think I'm going to sweat it. If I get bored over the winter time, I might do it. Um, but anyways, I thought this was really neat. Now, one of the things, obviously, be careful that, you know, when you go to do the, uh, you know, um, especially the X, that you don't catch your other meter in this, uh, uh, you know, one of these uh, troughs here in the table. So just kind of like a little safety note. Uh, so hopefully you guys found this interesting. I think this is a handy piece because, again, I like to set this up. Uh, a little bit on seasonal changes too because this is in my basement so humidity and temperature will have a little effect on this uh, because one of the things that you can um, do especially with this aluminum if you just leave this sit here and, and you know watch it during a temperature change you know maybe you have this out in a garage shop and in the morning it's 10 or 15 degrees cooler than in the afternoon this will change a little bit um, you know the metal will shift and, 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 and change a little bit so anyways again it's a handy little uh, build that I thought that combines 3d printing CNC and all that kind of stuff and my also my love for dial indicators there's nothing cooler than dial indicators is there really I also have links below to the Thingiverse file for this if you want to print it I'll have links to the the gauges especially the uh, clockworks which uh, has a USB cable along with the USB cable which I'm going to be using in future videos if you guys want to follow along down below and hey let me know in the comment section what you think now uh, another piece I'm coming up with watch for a future video is uh, you know I'm just using regular quarter 20 bolts to mount these well I've came up with a new idea based upon this uh, for a quick change bolt setup so we'll be coming in a future video and it will be out on Thingiverse so watch for that so anyways hopefully you found this interesting if you did hey give it a big thumbs up I appreciate it also swag shop coming up over there subscribe button over there and hey we'll see you in the next video cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel